problem. Seven, and this looks at a block on an inclined plane. So this question we're asked, suppose a block of mass M is placed on an inclined plane as shown in the figure below. So there is the plane right here, has the weight W, so that's mass times gravity. And this is the F, uh, this force right here is a force due to friction. That's uh, dragging it along here. And there is the normal force perpendicular uh, to uh, the weight there. I'm, I mean perpendicular to the plane. So uh, the the force of friction depends on the normal force right there, which is right this yeah, which is perpendicular to this uh, plane right there. And basically, the flatter this is, the higher the normal force and higher the friction. So uh, the block's descent down the plane is slowed by friction. If theta is not too large, friction will prevent the block from moving at all. So there's a theta right there. So if this is not too large, it will uh, will be held up by friction. So the forces acting on the block are the weight W, where the magnitude of the weight is equal to mg, where this equals to basically the magnitude is just mg, like that, uh, where uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and the normal force N, or the normal component of the reactionary force of the plane on the blocks, basically the plane is, is pushing back uh, opposite of the weight on, uh, this is a normal component to it, that's pushing uh, back uh, upwards on there. And uh, yeah, it, this is the normal component of the reactionary force of the plane on the block. And again, reactionary force, because if, if you just have a regular uh, block like this on, on just a flat plane like this, the weight is being held up by an equal reaction force. So N, in this case, equals to W, if this is W, it's not moving. And so that's a perpendicular one, but this one, it does not equal it necessarily because, uh, yeah, this is not going to be equal to it. It's at an angle and so on. And uh, here where uh, the absolute value of N or this the magnitude of it, the normal component of the reactionary force of the... Actually, no, I think I typed that in. <laughs> duplicate, duplicate. Anyways, erase that. So where the magnitude of N is equal to uh, just lowercase n. So this is the magnitude of it, like that. So this is uh, absolute value is equal to N. Like that, all right? Uh, and the force F due to friction, which acts parallel to the inclined plane opposing the direction of the motion. All right, so now if the block is at rest and theta is increased, the, uh, the absolute value of here must also increase until ultimately, so the absolute value of F, uh, the friction force must increase ult uh, until ultimately the uh, friction force reaches its maximum right here beyond which the, the block begins to slide. For example, if you have initially right here, here's a block on a flat plane, uh, this is all normal force is equal to W, and this is W, and it's not gonna move anywhere, and also there's friction here is zero. The, the friction force is zero, and then as you increase it, you're gonna slowly increase, increase friction until a maximum value after which it starts sliding. So you could uh, pl play around with a block on a plane like that on your own, and you'll see just that. All right, so at this angle, we'll call this theta sliding, or theta s, so I'll just ignore this uh, correction. It has been observed that uh, the absolute uh, value of f is proportional to n. So at this angle, uh, this right here, uh, the uh, sliding angle of theta s, is going to be proportional just at, the, uh, just at the moment where it begins to slide, or just a moment before it begins to slide. Anything higher, it will slide, and that is proportional to n. So thus, when uh, the friction force is maximal, we can say that yeah, we can say that friction is equal to uh, we'll call this uh, yeah we'll call this uh, this is a uh, mu actually I think it's Greek for mu uh, right there so mu of s like that times it by n so just proportionally uh, constant so we're uh, mu uh, in uh, yeah I think that's a uh, Greek or Latin or something let's see what I wrote uh, here yeah so here's quickly on uh, Wikipedia so mu is uh, written like that lowercase. Uh, mu is the 12th letter of the Greek alphabet. All right, so mu. So we're using some uh, Greek right there, and uh, that says Greek is uh, mu. All right, so epic stuff there. And uh, this coefficient is called the coefficient of static friction and depends on the materials that are in contact. All right, so now uh, we have uh, three questions or four questions here. I'm just going to read the first one. We'll, we'll solve the first one, and then we'll solve each one separately instead of reading all out just because it's a lot of questions. So part A, observe that n, the the vectors n plus f plus w equals zero, and deduce that uh, the sliding friction right here, and this is at uh, the sliding. And I mean, this is just at the just before the point of sliding. And deduce that the mu of s is equal to 10 
of theta of s. All right, so it basically it equals to the tangent of that angle there. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at that. So uh, let's go look at the solution to part A. So when theta equals to theta s or the theta sliding, the block is not moving because anything higher than it will move. So the sum of the forces on the block must be zero. Thus, the sum of uh, n plus f plus w equals zero. And uh, yeah, this relationship is illustrated geometrically in the figure below. Uh, first of all, uh, basically, if it's not moving, then again, we're going to have to have n plus f plus w equals to zero. And this is all vectors like that. And if we uh, rearrange this, we're going to get, uh, just make it in terms of n plus f like this. So what we get is n plus f, normal force with the friction, plus the friction force equals to negative w f like this. And uh, this is at, uh, this is theta s. I'll put theta s right there. And now uh, we can see this geometrically. I'll draw this uh, as this summation right here. So n, so I'm going to do is like this. This is the flat line like that. I'm going to draw f this way. So there's the uh, sliding one. I'm going to parallel to this uh, f there. So this is our f. I'll write it a bit lower. Like that. And this angle is theta s, like that. All right, so f plus n, and n is the normal uh, force, is going to be like this. It's going to go straight over to here. And this is our normal force, n. And now we have the w is going down like this. So in other words, down uh, w is going negative down like that. So this is how it looks like geometrically, because you'll have n plus uh, f plus n. So if you do the vector summation, it equals to w, but it's going uh, backwards, so it's equals to negative w. And now if we take a look at the angles right here, uh, this angle from the bottom, this is a, a right angle from here. I'll draw this. Um, so this is uh, right angles. This is right angle and also right angle this way. And so in other words, this is not, this is uh, 90 minus theta s. So then this angle right here, this is actually going to equal to theta s. And you can see this uh, because uh, this is a triangle. So recall the triangle is at 180 degrees. So minus all the angles inside. So 180 degrees minus 90, uh, or, or minus this 90 first, minus 90, and then minus this 90. 90 uh, minus theta s, like that. So then this becomes, well, this is 180, 90 minus uh, 90 is negative uh, 180. So these all cancel. This is equals to theta s. And also you could see that this is, if I just extend this out to there, yeah, if I just extend it out like there, this is going to be right angle right here. And this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, yeah, there's going to be 180 minus 90 minus theta. So it's going to be another 90 in there, 90 minus eight theta right here. So again, it's just exactly symmetric, 90 minus theta s, like that, and, and so on. So that's what we get. Yeah, so if it's 90 minus theta here, this has to be uh, theta, this is theta s. So this is 90 minus uh, theta s, this is be theta s. So uh, in other words, we do this because we see it's a similar triangle. I mean, not a similar triangle, just we use, use a tangent. So if we look right here, we have this triangle uh, w, n, and f. So we can just write this out as uh, thus, uh, thus, yeah, so thus, uh, tan of theta s is equal to opposite, which is f, over, uh, adjacent. Adjacent, and adjacent is a normal vector m, like that. So opposite is f, and yeah, so opposite is f right here, and the other one is the adjacent. So then, uh, this equals to, yeah, this equals to number f is just equal to, uh, proportional to the normal vector value, so n, like this. And yeah, actually, yeah, since we're dealing with uh, the magnitudes, not, not uh, so we're taking the magnitudes of this, not just the vector. So the, this tan uh, theta of s, and if you look at the magnitudes, magnitude of, uh, of the f uh, friction forces is mu s, uh, mu sub s times n, and then this one is just n. So this cancels, and we're just left with, uh, I'll write this better, mu of s equals to tan theta s. So there it is. All right, so uh, yeah, and that is pretty much it. That's our tan theta s. That is what we were asked to solve right here, and that's uh, that's correct. So now let's take a look at part B. In part B, we're asked: suppose that for theta is greater than theta s, an additional outside force H is applied. So now, uh, even though it's it's above it, so it's going to be sliding. There's an uh, there is an uh, H above it applied to the block horizontally from the left. So we're going to apply. A value of like this and it's going to be the magnitude is going to be lowercase h right there from the left and let the magnitude of uh, capital H vector 
equals to lowercase h. And if h is small, the block may slide down the plane. If h is large enough, the block will move up the plane. So if it's, if it's really big, it will start sliding upward. But if it's not, not enough, if it's small, it will go down. So you got to go just right. So let h uh, minimum be the smallest value of h that allows the block to remain motionless. So it's all, always dealing with the uh, the not moving case. So that uh, yes, yeah, so that the force uh, right here, uh, the friction force is maximal. So the friction force is, is max such that uh, it's going to slide if it's anything more. But now we're doing a, a tiny bit of force just so it doesn't move. Uh, and this is just at the maximal right here. So basically, look at the minimum. Well, we got to push it. So by choosing the coordinate axis so that uh, the the uh, force F lies along the X axis, resolve each force into components parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane and show uh, these, uh, these um, yeah, show that these equations are all true. So H minimum times, yeah, times sine theta plus MG cosine theta equals N and H minimum times cosine theta plus uh, mu uh, mu sub S uh, times n equals mg sine theta. So in other words, uh, this is saying choosing the coordinate system so that uh, f lies along the x-axis. So in other words, we have to rotate this down. So this is along there, but the x-axis is over here. So we need to rotate this down by, well, theta. <laughs> so that we'll, we'll have x along that parallel to it. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. And then basically, we have to uh, resolve each force into components parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane. So we got to resolve everything uh, parallel and perpendicular like that. So let's just rotate it and see what happens. All right. All right, so let's take a look at the solution to B. So we place the block at the origin and sketch the force vectors acting on the block, including the additional horizontal force H with initial points at the origin. We then rotate the system so that uh, that F lies along the positive X axis and the inclined plane is parallel to the X axis as in the following figure. All right, so let's draw the origin. All right, so initially we have, here's the origin. I'm going to go uh, dash lines. Uh, uh, actually, before we do dash, I'm going to go, there's a horizontal. Uh, we're going to put everything at the origin. So this is our H right here. This is our horizontal. And then the, there's a, there is the uh, dash lines for the, uh, the yeah, just the X axis there. So sketch the force vectors along. So we place the block at the origin. So the or it's going to be at the origin. And let's sketch the force vectors on it and including the additional horizontal H. So it's like that. And now we have the, Friction force is up like here, and uh, this is our angle theta, and this is going to be a force vector like this. And now we have a normal force like this, and this is perpendicular to that. And then again, we have to draw the vertical axis like that. And now we have a W going down like this. This is our W. And that's our weight like that. But now we're going to rotate it. So we're going to we're going to rotate everything by theta so that the F is a horizontal. So what we're going to get is a, here's the origin. This is our F. And there's, again, this is our new horizontal setup there. And so that means that H is going to be rotating by theta. So then H is going to be down like that at an angle theta. And this is our H. And this also means that what we have here, rotating everything, so then the W is going to be going over all the way to here. Also, this W is make it a bit more realistic. So it's a bit longer. Let's go. It should be the biggest one, I think. Oops, I don't know why it does that sometimes. Now let's try that again. Okay, so uh, this should be the biggest one, W, like that. All right, and then uh, this one should be slightly smaller just because the normal reaction one is going to be, uh, it's going to be the friction force is the third biggest. That's going to be our N, like that. All right, here, I just fixed that up, made uh, F a tiny bit smaller, and so on. So now what we're going to have is a W. This is the W like this. I think uh, we already have, um, yeah, let's erase this. Put a W like that. All right, so now this is going to be, W is going to be over to here, and this is uh, angle theta. And now the normal force, because it's a perpendicular to this, is going to be just vertical upwards like this. So that is our uh, normal force, make it a bit taller. Okay, it's good enough. And this is going to be our normal force, and this is perpendicular to this. All right, so going further, uh, so uh, it, we're given that the angle is higher than the sliding angle. So 
Uh, that means that the uh, absolute value of F, the friction force is maximal. So that uh, F is going to be the, the magnitude is going to be mu uh, sub S times N for N is greater than uh, or equal to uh, theta S because uh, it's at the maximum. So it's not going to get any more based on the material because when you get a higher and higher angle, eventually you're going to get a uh, vertical like this. You're going to have zero friction. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, actually, yeah, because uh, we're increasing it such that it's already at maximum like this. And uh, let's say the maximum is over here. But now we're going slightly o over there. So you're still going to have some friction force as long as you have some um, yeah, some normal force there. So anyways, it's uh, and uh, I, if you think about it again, I think it's going to be a, a near this sliding one. But it's, it's more than, but still, it's a maximum. So anything higher is going to be sliding. So it should be sliding, but we're adding a horizontal force to it. So then the vectors in E in terms of components parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane are, so we're going to have, so in this case right here in terms of this, we're going to have, and this is our W, so we're going to do it in, in terms of, uh, this is our new coordinate system. So the uh, the J component is at the top right here. This is our J, and then this is our I component, or X component, because we're dealing with vectors, put IJ like that. Yeah, okay. So then that means uh, the n, let's do the a normal vector like there. Uh, the normal vector is going to equal to, this is going to be equal to just uh, lowercase n. So this is just at the maximum. So we're going to go uh, n j like that. And all right. And uh, yeah, that's the absolute uh, value of the, or just the magnitude of the normal vectors n. And it's going to be in this component. I'm going to write this in vector form like this. It's going to be basically zero on the i's component, and now the j1, just put n like that. And then uh, likewise, the next one is going to be uh, f like this. This equals to, this is just horizontal, perfectly on the positive i, I axis, or the positive x axis. That's just going to be mu sub s times n, this i component. Or in a vector component form, this could be, this is written as mu of s n and zero. All right, so now the next one is going to be W, and W is right here. So this one, uh, this is going to equal two. Well, uh, we we have a, a, a angle there, so then we need to go to the horizontal one is going to be on this sine uh, sine side, like here. It's going to be the sine of the angle times the magnitude. So this equals two. Yeah, it's equal to, and it's also on the negative side. So this is going to be actually the negative side is going to be negative. The uh, magnitude is mg, and then times it by uh, sine theta. So sine theta is opposite over a, a, a hypotenuse. So we get the horizontal one right here. So that is going to be this one right here, and that's going to be our i. And then plus the next one is going to be uh, the vertical one is also going to be negative, negative ed, uh, mg, and then there's going to be cosine, negative mg and cosine theta j like that. And we could write this in component form, but I'm just going to keep it as this because it's uh, too long to add, add all that. So now the next one is, uh, the next one is, yeah, the H. We try to add the H right here. So this is the last one is our H component. And this is going to be, this equals to, now it's going to be, in this case, the cosine, and it's going to be positive, the cosine of this angle there. So that is going to be, because the cosine is adjacent, so we're all going to have cosine angle. Yeah, cosine angle, and it's also uh, whenever we were told the absolute value of h is uh, is just h min. So we're going to go the minimum like that. All right, just put a bracket around that. That's going to be our i like that. So h min bracket cosine, and then plus the next one is going to be uh, it's going to be on the negative side, and uh, it's, it's not loading. Okay, so negative, and then sine. So sine to get the opposite, and then the uh, h min. So h min sine theta and then uh, j and it's a negative because we're going downwards there according to the our axis and uh, now the next setup is well we just equate components and see what we get well let's uh, let's uh, equate the uh, let's do the i component first so equate the i component we're gonna get uh, basically sum all these up so zero yeah, so and it's not moving, so we're gonna go zero plus uh, mu uh, mu sub s n uh, plus, and then it's gonna be well negative mg. Let's put a negative mg. Negative mg sine theta, and then plus hm 
minimum cosine theta, this uh, equate this equals to zero. So because it's not moving, so everything equals to zero like that. Yeah, so what I am going to do here is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put this h min first. So I'm gonna put h min like this, cosine theta, and plus a, a mu sub s of n. And I'm gonna move this over to the other side. Put it all the way to the end, so we're gonna get uh, equals to mg sine theta. And the reason I'm doing this is that's exactly how the question we were asked to do. And I'm gonna box this in. So this is the first equating this, I'm gonna call, call this equation one. So mg sine theta, so this is h min cosine theta plus uh, mu sub s times n. I'll uh, block this out like this, uh, mu sub s times n and then mg sine theta. So if we go back up to the question we're asked, uh, part b, h, uh, is the first one, h min sine theta plus mg, actually this is the second one. <laughs> so h min cosine theta plus mu sub uh, uh, sub s and mg sine theta. So this is correct. Uh, but I, I don't know why it doesn't, that doesn't, just let me, sometimes that, right, okay, this should be working. So h min cosine theta plus uh, mu s and mg sine theta. So that is uh, right here, h min cosine theta plus mu s and mg sine theta. Uh, that's our first equation. So now the next one is the j component. Okay. So let's say, let's do a look at the j component. Let's write this a bit better. All right, so the j component, we combine all these ones there. So what we're left with, this is going to be n. Okay, so n plus zero. Let's put everything for completeness. Then plus, uh, this is a, or neg uh, negative mg cosine theta. We'll put this like this, uh, minus mg cosine theta, and then minus hm sine theta. Uh, hm. H min, I mean hm, or h minimum sine theta. And this all equals to zero. This is not moving. All right, so what I'll do is now I'll move these all to the other side. And and then uh, write n on the other side as well. So move this over there, and then write them write them uh, first. So we're going to be positive. So uh, I'll put an arrow like this. Okay, I don't know what is happening anymore. Yeah, my one note just glitching out. Okay, so we have this. It's going to be m g cosine theta plus h min. Um, now it's plus h min sine theta. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll rearrange it. Here, I quickly just uh, rearrange the positive and rearrange it, uh, just so we'll have this in front, this one after, just because uh, that's what the question is, and then put the N at the end there. So this is what we have. All right, so we have this, and I'll call this equation two. And now if we scroll back up, I'll write this H a bit better, like this. So H men, if we scroll back up, exactly what we were asked to solve. So H, this is uh, B. This is the, the first equation, h min sine theta plus mg cosine theta equals n. So h, h min sine theta, so h min sine theta uh, plus mg cosine theta equals n. So that's, that is that. Yeah, so that is that, and that's actually, uh, yeah, that is uh, basically all, all we're asked to do in question uh, or part uh, B. So now let's look at part uh, solution to, to C. Yeah, so let's take a look at the uh, question C first uh, to, to, before we get to the solution. So, so part C says show that h min equals to mg tan theta minus theta s. And then we're asked, does this equation seem reasonable and doesn't make sense for theta uh, equals theta s? And what about as theta is approaching 90 degrees? Explain. All right, so it's a a uh, big uh, question there. So let's take a look at this. We got to find out. Yeah, we got to find out what h min is. Basically, we got to solve for h min. So, and we have h min in both these equations. So, since equation two is solved for n, so it's already solved for n, we can substitute it into equation one. So we can just basically throw this n all the way inside there and then solve it. So let's just take a look at that. So uh, let's look at right this equation one. So we'll, we'll have h min cosine theta, so that's this right here, plus mu sub s, and then n, and n is gonna be, well, h min times it by sine theta plus mg uh, cosine theta, 
And then this is going to equal to, uh, yeah, equals to mg sine theta. mg sine theta. And I'll just put a dot there so it looks like that. So mg uh, sine theta and so on. All right, so now we can just rearrange and solve for it. All right, so now we just uh, simplify this further. So this is going to be equal to h min cosine theta and then plus, uh, I'll write uh, this as mu sub s h min and then sine theta. And then the next one here is going to be plus mu s, uh, mu sub s mg cosine theta, but I'm going to move it over to this side because there's no hm there. So this equals to mg sine theta and then minus by this and uh, this and this together. So just multiply that out and, and, and minus it. So that equals to mu sub s mg cosine theta. All right, so what we end up having is, well, let's uh, take out the hm here. And uh, yeah, so what I'll do is hm or h minimum is going to equal to cosine theta plus uh, mu sub s of sine theta. This equals to and take out the mg and this is going to be sine theta minus uh, mu sub s cosine theta. All right, so thus hm is equal to or h minimum is equal to just divide this out, move it over to the other side. So what we end up having is uh, mg, let's put the mg by itself, and we got this equals to, I don't know why it's not writing, okay, mg, then we have a giant equation right here, we're going to have on the top sine theta minus mu sub s, write this a bit neater, uh, this is sine, and then this is mu sub s cosine theta, and then I'll divide this by cosine theta plus mu sub s sine theta. Uh, now this resembles a uh, trigonomic identity, and uh, to do that, this actually resembles a sine, I mean a tan, a tangent one, and, and to do that, we're going to multiply top and bottom, uh, just divide both by cosine theta. So divide top and bottom by cosine theta. So then uh, this ends up becoming equals to mg. The top ta sine theta is going to be divided by cosine theta. That's just tan theta by definition. Uh, so I'll just uh, make a bigger bracket right here. Tan theta and then uh, minus mu sub s and then a cosine divided by cosine just, just cancels out. So all we have is tan theta minus mu. All right, uh, so we have the top part. Uh, let's fix this up a bit. Uh, negative there. And then the next one is going to be well divided by cosine. Again, it just simplifies it when you divide by the cosine out. And this is going to be equals to 1. And then plus mu sub s sine theta over cosine theta. Again, that's just tan theta by definition. Uh, like that. And now we'll recall. And I'm going to put recall. Recall that uh, because f, uh, the friction force at a maximum, the uh, mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction, is going to be equals to maximum as well. It's going to be tan sliding one, tan uh, of theta s or theta sliding. So I'll box uh, this out like this. And so we can just throw this back inside there. So uh, I'll put a recall like that. Erase, erase that. All right, so then this ends up equaling to mg tan... This is going to be a uh, tan of theta minus, this is going to be tan of theta s. And the bottom one is going to be a bit bigger. 1 plus tan of theta s, tan of theta, like that. And uh, now this is actually a trigonomic identity. This is actually uh, mg tan of theta uh, minus theta s. And I'll show you that soon. So that's that's our h min. Like this. That's our h min over there. All right. And uh, that's actually our exact answer. And uh, first of all, note the trigonomic identity I used. There's a link to my earlier video. So if we have tan of uh, theta minus theta s or x minus uh, y, so two angles like that. So tan x minus tan y. Uh, divided by 1 plus tan x, tan y. And that's exactly what we have here. Imagine this is replaced with x and y, x and y. 
x and y, x and y. So that's our just tan x minus y. And that's exactly what we were asked to solve. And I'll, I'll scroll up. This is, uh, go back to part C. So part C, show that h min equals mg tan theta minus theta s. Does this equation seem reasonable? Uh, yeah, now we're asked, does it seem reasonable? Does it make sense for, uh, and again, this is correct, mg tan uh, theta minus theta s. Does it make sense for theta equals theta s? Uh, what about as a theta approaches 90 degrees? Explain. So let's take a uh, look at what I had written or the solutions many written. So note that for uh, theta equals theta s, h min, yeah, h min, so if theta is equal to theta s, h min is equal to uh, just mg tan theta. This, if these are equal, mg tan theta, that's just zero. So uh, tan of zero is zero. So which makes sense since the block is at rest for uh, theta s, thus no additional force, is, uh, for force h is necessary to prevent it from moving. So that's just the friction alone will hold it in place. As theta increases, the factor, uh, this is uh, theta minus theta s, uh, and hence the value of h min. So this right here, be increasing slowly, increases slowly for small values of theta minus theta s, but much more rapidly as theta minus theta s, um, yeah, as theta minus theta s becomes significant. And you can see how the graph uh, for tan is. So if we have uh, the graph of tan like this, I'll uh, look at this. Imagine we have theta minus theta s. This is our tangent of it. Uh, what ends up happening is uh, it, it's, it's an exponential like this. It's an exponential like this. And it, this is at 90 degrees. This is at 90 degrees right there. And also on the reverse side, when we're dealing with negatives, it goes uh, negative like that. This is negative 90. But we're only dealing with uh, positive because of the angle of the real world uh, application here. So then this, it, it goes uh, slowly and then goes rapidly up. And uh, this seems reasonable. And I'll go here. Uh, this seems reasonable because as the steeper the inclined plane, the less the horizontal components of the various forces affect the movement of the of the block because again again if it's it's if it's almost 90 degrees you're pretty much vertical like here this is gonna the friction one's gonna be zero so you're gonna need a whole lot of force you're gonna have pretty much going to infinity there and uh, that's because uh, that's assuming the friction force is already maxed out so you can't get any higher yeah so uh, this seems reasonable as the steeper the inclined plane the less the horizontal components of the various forces affect the movement of the block so we need a much larger magnitude of horizontal force to keep the block motionless if uh, if we allow theta approach to approach 90 degrees, corresponding to the inclined plane being placed vertically, so again, the, the whole plane will be vertical. Now you have the block on it like that. Uh, the value of h min is quite large. This is to be expected as it takes a great amount of horizontal force to keep an object from moving vertically. So you got a little, you imagine you have a textbook, you have to uh, force uh, the book on the wall as hard as you can so it does not fall down. Uh, the heavier it is, the harder it is, and also the the higher, the less friction on the wall, the harder it is as well. In fact, without friction, so if there was no friction, yeah, and here, here, uh, it says, in fact, without friction, so if theta s equals to zero, so if you have this equation in here, so if we had no friction, uh, this h minimum, and there was nothing to uh, equate this, so we had this just equated to zero, sliding one is zero. Yeah, so in other words, the angle at which sliding occurs, so if it can slide at a flat thing like here, any amount, so then uh, the angle is uh, basically flat, will slide. Uh, then we would have uh, theta as approach 90 degrees, and thus uh, h min approaches infinity. Yeah, so then if, if this was zero, if, if, if this was uh, zero, the zero friction, uh, sliding friction, um, and then this and then this approaches 90 degrees, this is going to infinity. <laughs> Let's go straight to infinity, like that. So I'll just erase this. So yeah, so so that uh, does seem reasonable as well. So and it would be impossible to keep the block from slipping. So no amount of horizontal force uh, would be necessary because as this goes to infinity, the h minimum goes to infinity as well. So uh, so that is that. So you're going to need a, a slight angle at all times for it to be pushed upwards. All right, and uh, now let's take a look at uh, part D. Let's so sc scroll up and read it. Uh, it's going to be another uh, epic, uh, <laughs> epic question. So let h max be the largest value of h that allows the block to remain motionless. Uh, in in which direction is f heading? And uh, yeah, and, and it also asks show that h max equals mg tan theta plus theta s. This was uh, theta minus theta s. It's going to be plus. Does this equation seem reasonable? And and explain. And again, this is now instead of the h minimum. Before we had this is what we had in part c where we had a minimum is so that it doesn't slide down and and now we're at, uh, we're asking a maximum 
so that it, it remains uh, so like a, a giant maximum so that it doesn't move uh, well in this case revving maximum it remains motionless in other words it doesn't move upwards so just before it moves upwards it's going to have a downwards friction force because it wants to go up so you can have a friction is now going downwards so that that's a pretty interesting conundrum so let's continue further and also we got to show that h max solve for h max and then, and then answer or ask if it's a reasonable and and whatnot so it's going back here uh d so solution to d so since h max is the largest value of h that keeps the block from slipping the force of friction is keeping the block from moving up the inclined plane thus f is directed down the plane our system of forces is similar to that in part b then except that we have uh, the uh, F right here is negative, uh, except we have that, I'll put it that, we have the uh, friction force, so that it it's, uh, shows up on the bottom line. Friction force uh, F is equal to negative uh, mu sub N, uh, yeah, mu sub S times N uh, on the I uh, vector. So, and note that uh, the force of friction right now is again maximal, because we're going for the maximum uh, applied uh, horizontal force. So then we're going to need to have a maximum force of friction. But this is going to also equal to, yeah, it's also equal to right here, uh, mu sub s times n uh, on the negative side. So following our procedure in parts b and c, we can equate components. So we're going to have to uh, reverse it again. So, yeah, so let's just do the same thing. Let's try to uh, speed it up. So we have, this is our angle, uh, this is our inclined plane uh, at an angle theta. And uh, I'll just uh, draw this, yeah, just draw it like this. And so then this is going to be a horizontal force on it. This is going to be our h vector. It has a normal vector uh, n like that. It has a, a weight like this. And now the friction is going to be going downwards like that. So that's the friction force. And uh, I will uh, draw this. Now we're going to rotate this again to get it to the inclined plane so that it's parallel. Uh, to the for the inclined plane. So we're going to go backwards here. So the origin. So it's going to go backwards. This is going to be our F. It's going to be dot, dot, dot. And now we have this is going to go. Uh, so we're rotating everything. Uh, actually, we're rotating. Uh, yeah, same thing, actually. We're still rotating it the same direction. Like this, theta. So then if this is, and this is perpendicular to it, again, so this is going to be, the no normal force is going to be up like that. And uh, the weight, again, is going to be on the same thing like this. This is the weight. Uh, this is the weight like this. And this is the angle. It's going to turn like that by theta. And likewise, the uh, horizontal force move it over to this. Uh, initially, it was at the center, but now rotating it. So it's going to go down like this. This is our h vector. And this is at an angle of theta between like that. And now just to equate components, I'll just put it all in together. Uh, so the i component... Uh, instead of doing what we did before, so I'll just put it in the I like this. So the uh, horizontal uh, components, just do just do it all instead of writing it uh, each separately because it's uh, all pretty straightforward. So uh, we're gonna have right here the only one that's on the left is be negative f. So I'll put negative f, which is uh, mu sub s times n, and then uh, we're gonna have negative the w. This is gonna be negative m g, and now this is gonna be co. Uh, this is sine sine theta. This is for the W, sine theta W. And now this one is on the right side, so it's positive. So plus is the horizontal one. Plus and H is going to be lowercase h max. This is the maximum force. And now it's going to be cosine. So the cosine is, a, is the adjacent one, the horizontal component. And this equals to zero. So solve for this. We get H max. So H max right here, cosine theta. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, minus uh, uh, mu sub s uh, times n and move this over to the other side. So move that over to the other side. This just equals to just make it similar to what we had in uh, parts, uh, I think, c or something. Yeah, okay, I don't know why it's okay. This is going to be m g sine theta. So we'll call this equation one. And again, this is very similar to what we had earlier. Yeah, scrolling back up here. So it's basically the same thing, but now we have uh, h min uh, cosine theta and then minus uh, mu sub s uh, times n and this the right side's mg sine n. So basically the exact same thing, but it's a minus instead of a plus. So again, same thing, but minus instead of a plus. And now the second one is the j component. j component is, is a vertical one. So n is the positive n. So that's going to be just put n like that. 
So and like that. And now we're gonna have to subtract these two, the W and H components. So minus uh, the W is gonna be cosine. So mg uh, cosine theta. And then the next one is gonna be minus uh, the H max. And this is gonna be uh, sine theta. So the sine theta angles on the other side. So it's gonna be the uh, opposite side. And that's gonna be negative and negative. Yeah. So this equals to zero. So in other words, we're going to get mg, uh, I'll put h max first, so h max uh, sine theta, and then plus, because uh, we move this both, both to the other side and this all for n, uh, it's going to be mg cosine theta, this equals to n. So just to get rid of all the negatives, there is that, this is equation 2. And this is in fact the exact same thing as part c, because uh, in this case, f is uh, is not included. The, the, the vertical component, f has no vertical component. So h max sine theta plus mg cosine theta equals n. Same thing, except instead of uh, h min, we have h max. So we go back up here. This is equation 2. h min sine theta plus mg cosine theta equals n. Now we have h max. h max sine theta, mg cosine theta, and n, like that. And likewise, again, we put the n inside uh, equation 1 and then solve for it. So we go put this inside and then solve for it here. And what we end up having is so thus we're going to have H max cosine theta minus uh, mu sub s. And then this is the N is going to be this right here H max sine theta plus mg cosine theta. And this equals to, uh, yeah, that's the, this part right here equals mg sine theta. This is just our n. And this is uh, again equal to mg sine theta. All right, so same thing. We're going to start solving for all of this. And this is going to be, uh, just, uh, ex just simplify this all further, mh max like this. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to factor out the h max right here. h max multiply this uh, u sub s inside. So h max is going to equal to cosine theta minus mu sub s sine theta. And then the next one, this one, I'm going to multiply that inside and move it over to the other side. It's going to equal to mg and also factor out the mg right there. So we're going to mg sine theta. And then this is going to be plus. Now this one, because this is uh, uh, u uh, su uh, mu sub s times mg cosine theta, that's going to be negative, but it's going to be moving over to the other side. It's going to be positive. So it's going to be uh, mu mu sub s cosine theta. Like that. And then likewise, this is going to be equals to h max. Just divide this out. We're going to get mg. And now we're going to get a sine theta plus mu sub s cosine theta all over cosine theta minus mu sub s sine theta. And now this is going to be times it by again, divide by uh, one over cosine, one over cosine theta, one over cosine theta. And then what we end up having is, yeah, what we end up having is this equals to, well, mg, and then uh, this can be sine, uh, sine theta divided by cosine, that's just going to be 10 theta and then plus mu sub s and the cosine cancels out and put this bracket now the next one is going to be cosine divided by cosine is one and then minus mu sub s tan theta and then also we now we just replaced uh, mu sub s with uh, tan theta s so this equals two mg tan theta plus and same thing as before tan theta s because it's at a, the friction force at a maximum. So the mu is S is at a maximum. So one minus tan theta S tan theta like that. All right. And again, this is the exact same trig identity as above. Actually, it's the uh, reverse side. So this is tan theta plus tan theta S this is one minus tan theta S uh, times tan theta. So we go back to our trig identity. Uh, now we have this theta. Uh, this is X is plus on the top minus at the bottom. The other one had a minus on top plus at the bottom. Exact same thing, x, y, or theta, theta, s, theta, theta, s. And so it has to be a plus. So this is going to equal to tan theta plus theta, uh, s. So equals 2. And this is equal to tan, uh, which is mg, mg tan theta 
plus theta s like that. This is h max like this. All right, so this is what we have. Box this all out. There it is. And this is exactly what we were asked to solve. The other one was a minus. This now is a plus for the. Okay, this I, I just don't know why my one note glitches out sometimes. So there it is. Mg tan theta plus theta s. Let's go all the way. Scroll all the way back up. And all right, so there it is. Uh, H max equals mg tan theta plus theta s. And exactly the same. The other one's minus. This is going to be a plus. And now, and uh, now, uh, last thing we're asked is, does this equation seem reasonable? Explain. So basically, same thing as before. Now we've got to explain it. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see what I wrote down slash what the solution manual had written down. Let's erase this. All right, so uh, we would expect h max to increase as uh, theta increases. So as it as it goes up, we're going to need a bigger, more and more steep one. So as it goes steep like this, we need a very big uh, force right here to keep it uh, from stationary. Otherwise, you're going to have a a uh, the weight of gravity is going to be pushing it high, high, uh, uh, very, very um, uh, hard downwards, and uh, because of ma the friction force is already max, so then uh, so we would so we can't keep increasing it, so it's going to be pushing it really, really high up. We would expect h max increase as theta increases with similar behavior as we established for h min, but h with h max values uh, larger than h minimum because now we have this uh, theta plus theta s, and also because we expect it to be. Uh, to be increasing uh, as well higher or or uh, just yeah the values of it has to be actually greater than before because we had a minus but also we know that the tan goes up like this and each time if you get high further out to the right it's going to go up higher than that so it's going to be a larger value so that's that's reasonable so we can see this is the case if we graph h max as a function of of uh of theta as the curve is uh is the graph of h min translated to theta to the left so the equation does seem reasonable and uh, you can see this by, well, if we just graph it out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph like this. I'm going to call this tan of, uh, yeah, just tan of, uh, actually, let's put y right here. It depends on the function. So this is going to be theta. And now uh, just look at the positive side right here. Uh, I'll make it like this. So it's going to go up like this. This is at 90 degrees. This is at 90 degrees right here. Is that... Uh, uh, theta is equal to 90 degrees. So if we have just an angle right here, uh, or instead of a line uh, like that, I'll just erase this. All right, so yeah, let's just say we had uh, this right here. No, all right, yeah, let's say we had, uh, uh, okay, it goes like this. This is our theta. Okay, this is, our, I don't know why it keeps shifting. This is our theta. All right, here, I just fix that up. So let's say that's our theta, and let's just uh, exaggerate. Uh, we have over here, between here and here, is theta s. So then this is going to be right here is uh, theta plus theta s. And then the other one is going to be theta from here to here is also theta s. So right here is going to be theta minus theta s. Yeah, so in other words, uh, this right here, so for every, uh, every theta, uh, this uh, tan theta plus uh, theta s is going to be exactly the minimum, so h min, but uh, shifted to the, to the left to, by 2s. So in other words, uh, it, at this point, if this theta uh, minus theta s, we're supposed to have here. So this is going to be like shifted across uh, there. And so what I'll do is I'll just paste this one here. I'm going to copy and paste it. All right, so let's just uh, move this over. Okay, so if I move this over here, I guess move it over like this. Yeah, so basically just move it exactly uh, to uh, two theta s. Uh, this is two theta s. So all it is, uh, basically whatever value it, we have here for h min, the h max is going to be the same thing, but shifted over twice. So this is going to be higher than it at, at all times. So that, that it does seem reasonable there. So we can see this is the case if we graph h max as a function of theta, as a graph is the curve, graph of h min translated to theta s to the left. So the equation does seem reasonable now because h max needs to be higher than the uh, h min now because we also have the friction force going opposite. So we need to, we could even increase it even larger. Whereas the other one, the friction force on the opposite side, I mean, going on the, uh, going upwards. So that, yeah, so that uh, h min doesn't need to be as high, but now h max, the, the friction force is uh, aiming at us, so we need to be higher to overcome uh, it and so on. So we have a, a large max we can uh, achieve. And uh, notice that the equation predicts h max goes to infinity as theta goes to 90 minus s. In other words, uh, in other words, when this goes to theta plus theta s, 
Yeah, so if we have uh, 90 minus S right here, uh, this becomes uh, 90 uh, minus theta S plus theta S. This is the, this is the theta. Yeah, let's fix that up. So uh, 90 minus S as uh, this approaches this one, and, and then this 90, these cancels out. So in other words, it's approaching 90 right there. So as this approaches 90 uh, minus S uh, almost vertically, basically almost vertically, this predicts, uh, this is going to uh, infinity there. In fact, as H max increases, the normal force increases as well. Yeah, so as you're increasing the H max, uh, so for example, if you have the block right here, and as you're going to this much increasing it, the, the normal force also increasing it as, as much as well. Uh, but uh, when uh, the theta is between 90 minus S, and, uh, greater than, uh, minus than or equal to and uh, l less than 90 degrees or equal to. Yeah, and in this case, the horizontal force is completely counteracted by the sum of the normal and friction forces. So no part of the horizontal uh, force contributes to moving the block up the plane, no matter how large it, its magnitude. All right, so now if I uh, graph this out, just be uh, making a bit more sense. I'll just uh, visualize uh, what this all means. So let's say we had, we're going to have uh, multiple angles. We're going to have, uh, the first one's 90 degrees. So there's 90 degrees that uh, right hand sign. Uh, the next one right here is going to be, let's say we had theta s. This is for where the friction becomes maximum. Theta s. And now we have another one, which is 90 minus theta s. I'm going to make this uh, a bit, uh, I'll make it a bit flatter. So this is, let's say, uh, above it, uh, friction is going to be just maximum. And now this is going to be theta s like that. And so in other words, this part right here, this is going to be at theta. So this from here to here is theta. Uh, I mean, this is going to be 90 degrees minus theta s. 90 degrees minus theta s. Yeah, so uh, ab above this theta minus theta s and below the 90 degrees, what we end up having is uh, it does not matter. So the, the, the equation predicts that it does not matter how hard uh, how hard the horizontal force is, it will never go up. This will be counteracted by the friction force, uh, just the maximum friction force, and the uh, other and the normal force because normal force is constantly increasing as well. So you're going to have a period where yeah. So if you have the block like this, so it does not matter what you apply to this at uh, when it's above this uh, equal to or above. This is H like here. So this goes goes to infinity. And this, uh, again, the absolute value is going to go to infinity. And this is going to be normal, because normal force is going to be increasing the, as well as you're applying to it. It's just a reaction force. And this is the friction force F. So then, uh, again, for uh, 90 degrees minus theta S, uh, where the angles between it and 90 degrees, uh, you're going to have H, uh, I'll just go uh, magnitude of H naught, or H vector, equals to H max approaches infinity, and block doesn't move. Uh, doesn't move. So that is what this predicts. That's pretty uh, reasonable, I think, is it's, as it goes higher up, you're not going to go up higher and higher because the reaction force is increasing as well, and they always have this uh, this uh, friction force already maxed out way above this. So when it's really, really steep, it doesn't matter how hard you push it, you're going to be counteracted by the normal force and the friction force. At all times, because again, if this is going to infinity, even the normal force is going to infinity. So you're going to have some reactionary force uh, component that's horizontal of the normal force that's that's approaching infinity as well. So it does not move. That's that's quite fascinating stuff there. So yes, uh, epic, epic stuff.